Hey there YouTube, Jimmy with Through the Top Crane. This is not a crane video, but it's crane related, and I'll tell you why here in just a second. And oh, that. Why can't people make stickers that come off easy? That sticker's been bugging me ever since I put this bench together. It's time for that sticker to go. So, excuse me for a second. We're gonna make that sticker disappear. Before we get into this other deal. Okay, sticker's gone. Alright, back to what I was saying. This little gem right here. This is the aviation strobe that goes on the end of the boom on the ATF 180G-5, the old Tadano 200 ton crane. And I located it today. I haven't been able to find it since we uh, bought that crane. I think someone did a pretty good job of hiding it, and here's why. So whoever we bought it from mashed that uh, aviation strobe into something. In doing so, this is a 24-volt LED strobe. It broke the circuit board, so... Let's see if we can get this uh, GoPro to zoom in here. We got a crack in it. And we also have some broken traces on the circuit board and some broken solder joints. Oh, I guess it helps if I keep this in front of the camera. But we have some broken traces on the circuit board and some broken solder joints on some of the circuitry. So we're going to try to fix it. I don't know if it'll happen or not. We're going to give it a whirl. And I'm going to try to show you guys the best I can. I've got no one recording for me. Um, I've just got my camera stuck on a magnet mount, stuck on a little step ladder. And yeah, I'm going to do what I can. But first, we're going to get the old multimeter out. We're going to check some continuity on a few things. Stay with me here, GoPro. I really need to get another camera for recording this kind of stuff. I'm going to switch uh, camera modes here. Okay, so I switched to a narrow field of view. Get a drink of the tasty beverage here. Got this neat, neat little ice ball in there. Ice ball molds. Pretty cool. Okay, so we got the old fluke set to continuity check. So if we hear that beep, all is good. But let's roll this thing over. Let's see if we can do this without breaking it even more. I'm sure I've got no continuity from here to here. And there should be according to that trace. And then these are the terminals on the LED board. So I'm sure we got no continuity across the LED strip. Okay, and then looks like this little guy here was soldered to this part of the board. I'm sure there's no continuity there. Nope. Uh, I don't know if this thing's going to survive. We're going to give it a whirl. And that appears to be some kind of very tiny capacitor. It may not live to fight another day. And let's see, we've got some magic stuff here, some magic stuff here, a couple diodes, big resistor. And I'm guessing the reason why that resistor is in there is uh, this thing operates on 24 volts. 
but it's probably the LED board is probably less than 24 volts so they gotta have this resistor in here to knock the voltage down or supply a load basically to uh, eat up the remainder of the 24 volts only send like if this is a 4 volt board um, this resistor some of the other hardware would eat up 20, 20 volts and allow 4 volts to the board is the way I understand it I'm no uh, electronics engineer but uh, we're going to see what we can do with it it's already broke we're not going to break it anymore we're going to take it apart so let me get a pick here You guys might be asking, well, why are you worried about it? Well, I've got a job coming up Monday, starting Monday evening. I'm going to be working nights with uh, 240 feet of boom in the air. So it would be kind of nice to keep airplanes from running into me if they're in the area, which they shouldn't be that low anyway. But it also helps you see where the end of the boom is, which isn't necessarily important either because well as long as you're up in the air you're probably not going to hit anything but I'd still kind of like to be able to see the tip of the jib the old cadet just kicked on I'm going to turn that thing down a little bit it's actually kind of hot in here on a side note that 5,000 watt, 240 volt cadet heater requires a 30 amp breaker. So I probably need to put grease fittings in my electrical meter when that thing turns on. But it's the price you pay to have heat in your garage. Okay, let's see if we can get this out of here without doing more damage. Some of you might be saying, well, why don't you just buy one? Well, I would. But it wouldn't be here by Monday. And I've got some other tricks to show you guys too for operating the crane in the dark. But I'm not going to show you those until Monday. Okay. Now we got this little guy out. I'm going to gently try to reposition this thing where it once was. And all that's holding this at this point is this resistor. Okay, so it's going to be difficult. The solder, the solder on the LED strip is giving me fits. So, I'm going to gently wiggle this and see if I can go ahead and just take that LED strip out. Make sure it's the same, same both sides. In case we put it back in there backwards. So I'm trying to just break this solder joint right here. I'll take the strip out and then see if I can get this board back where it belongs. And then we will desolder the solder off that LED strip and put it back in. And then we'll have to do something with this. So I'll probably heat it up with a heat gun or a propane torch or something. We'll see if we can create some clearance inside there for this LED strip to stick up. Okay, it's, it's kind of like a tooth, it's getting looser. Let's say it's about there. I could just desolder that and pull it out, but and I'd have to dig around and find a desoldering bulb and all that fun stuff. And so we're just going to do it this way. Oh, almost there. Alright. So that's out. We'll set that off to the side. Now let's see if we can get this board to match up. Okay, that's pretty close. Trick's gonna be getting it to stay there. I don't know if I got any super glue. We're gonna go see though. All right, so we're in luck. We have super glue. 
I really didn't expect that. And historically, whenever I mess with super glue, I end up gluing my finger to things. So we're going to try not to do that tonight. We're going to try to close this gap up a little bit. Oh, little dab will do you. Got a little more in there than what I wanted. That stuff comes out fast. So now we just sit and wait. Oh, come on. Now, if that was my fingers, it would have stuck instantly. But a printed circuit board, really? I can't believe Super Blue's not holding that. Well, I can, because that's just the way things work out for me sometimes, but... Okay. Since Super Glue's not going to hold it, here's plan B. Let's see what I can find in the top of the old toolbox. Alright, on top of the old toolbox, we have electrical tape. So... See if we can just pull this thing together. This is very crude. Probably not one of my better jobs that I've done on stuff, but as long as the end result's the same, who cares? Like we said earlier, it's already broke. I know you guys can't see anything but the back of my hand. But all I'm trying to do is hold that little uh, crack together. Now I've probably got so much super glue in there I won't be able to solder it. But We're going to scrape around on this a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Go figure. The super glue won't hold the board together, but it'll hold the board to my finger. Really? Yeah, good enough. Okay. Where'd you go? All right, here we go. This here is the old handy dandy snap on butane soldering iron, which I love. If you guys need portable heat for soldering, this is your guy. We're going to put the tiny little pencil tip in it, and we're going to solder stuff the size of, uh, oh, 28 gauge wire maybe. And I couldn't find uh, my good solder, of course. That's getting hot. So we've got this stuff that I think was left to me by my grandpa, who passed away about, what, nine, ten years ago? But we're gonna make it work. And just in case it's not rosin core, oh, I've got flux around here somewhere, there it is. I don't know how old this is, but it too was in the same box of stuff from my grandpa. So. We're gonna see how it works out. So first things first, I'm gonna tin the tip on the soldering iron and I'm gonna try to, and hopefully you can see this, right down here this this little solder joint that's broke, I'm gonna try to solder it back together and then there's a little solder joint at the end of this little guy. We're gonna solder that back together. And then we've got a trace here that's been broken. So we're going to probably put a jumper in from this point to this point and just jump over that crack. 
and then we'll put the LED strip back in it. That's the plan. Can't guarantee it's gonna work. We're gonna give it a whirl. Okay, so what I just did is I put the tip of the soldering iron in the flux over here and you can see it. Shines it up. We're gonna get just a little bit of solder on the tip of it if it'll melt this big stuff. The stuff that I was looking for was tiny for, for soldering circuit boards. This stuff's for like soldering your water lines. Okay, so just put a little bit of solder on there that's called tinning the tip. And what that does, it helps conduct the heat from the soldering iron into that because we want it to happen as fast as possible. The reason being is we don't want to overheat all these little components. So I'm going to stick my fat head down in here. Okay, so we got that put back together. And I can smell the burnt super glue, so I don't know if that's good or bad. Hopefully uh, burnt super glue doesn't kill a person. Now, we've got this little bitty tiny solder joint right here. Alright, I think that did that. Let's have a look-see. Okay. If the old GoPro will focus on this, right there is what we just soldered. I wonder if that shows a value through it. I get nothing through it, it may be damaged. Let's try. Just try measuring resistance. Put on auto. All right, I must do something. According to the old fluke, it has some continuity. It's, it's got a reading through it. Whether or not it's the right reading or not, I don't know. We got to fix that uh, trace across there. So we need some wire. That trace is pretty small, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist a couple of these conductors together before I cut them off there. Because it'd be pretty difficult to twist them together after I cut it off there. And we're going to just lay this piece across those two points solder them in place. Hopefully I didn't make that too long. Well yeah, of course I did. Why wouldn't I have? Alright, that's better. block that up so it's sitting flat relatively flat hopefully it's still in the camera and we're just gonna lay this on here or we're gonna drop it down next to it we're gonna do that first we're gonna drop it down next to it first I was going to use my needle nose to put that in place, but my needle nose are being used. Alright, so we got that on there. Let's just move it around a little bit. If you're wondering why I'm shaking so much, it's because I'm not really shaking all that much. This is really small. Okay, so when you're soldering stuff, you're actually supposed to get the piece hot enough to melt the solder. Which I would love to do. 
but it's not an option. How many minutes is this been going on for? Oh wow, this is gonna be like a 30 minute video just fixing some stupid little light. That may or may not work anyway. Now for the fun part. We're gonna knock some of this solder down. So hopefully that will slide through there a little better. So we're going to gently try to wiggle that. Oh, I'm running out of butane. Sure is. It says to let this thing cool before you fill it so it doesn't explode. I got a fire extinguisher. If it creates a fireball, you guys are going to get to see it. Do as I say, not as I do. That's full. If this thing works, it'll be a miracle. All the abuse I've just put this thing through. Okay, now, I'm gonna solder these four terminals without soldering them to each other or soldering them to something they're not supposed to be soldered to. All right, we're going to switch to the bigger soldering tip. That's taking too long. If you overheat things like that, it's no good. All right, now we'll wait for that thing to heat up. And also, I probably could call Tadano, order one of these next day or have it Monday morning. There's also a certain degree of satisfaction a person gets from taking something that's destroyed making it function again. Okay, that one's done. That one. Ooh, I don't know about that one. We may have to add a little solder to it. Add some of this solder your copper pipes together solder. That one looks pretty good. Just this one. Okay, so we just put our four terminals. Come here, a little pick. Right here on our LED chip. We just soldered those back together. We've got our trace in place to fix that crack. Resoldered this connection. We soldered that little bitty tiny connection and discovered this trace on the back side. So it runs around from here to here. Well, electrons aren't going to jump that gap. So we're going to take another piece of wire. We're going to jump from right here over to here. And I got a little speck of solder where it doesn't belong on here. It's not on a terminal, but I don't want to leave it on the board. <laughs> Loose pieces of solder on a circuit board is no good. So we'll get that going. Okay, so I cut a little piece of copper. Just one strand out of that, uh, it looks like 14 gauge wire. Laid it in here with a little bend in it that matches the trace. I'm going to get a little drop of solder here. One over that other end. And the treble. This is a 24 volt 
strobe. I don't have anything here that's 24 volts. I don't even know if I've got enough batteries to put together to make 24 volts. I'm not taking both batteries out of my truck just so I can try this and see if it works. I'm going to get a little dab of solder on the end again. We're just going to... We're probably going to move that copper wire is what's going to happen. But I'm going to try to put a little drop here. A little drop over there. Ooh, that's barely on there. We're going to put a little add to on it. I don't like it. There's not much on there. I should probably quit while I'm ahead, but... If you don't like it, you don't like it, you know? I would have been further ahead if I would have just went to the auto parts store and bought some rosin core, real fine solder. Alright, let's see if we can follow that. We're going to check that on the back side of this board. Alright. Beep says we won. Well, that's everything I can find on that that was broke. The key is, and I'm guessing this is, like I said, it's either, it's either a little bitty tiny resistor, but it doesn't have bands like a resistor. And I haven't taken electronics class since high school, which was, I don't know, over 20 years ago. This could be a little bit tiny glass capacitor. It may not have survived. I don't know. Everything else looks like it will live to fight another day. <clears throat> so now we're going to see what we can do with this. This is pretty tough plastic. So I'm going to see if I can get my heat gun on it. I just need to heat this top up enough to create clearance in here, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll either we'll either get it reshaped or we'll set it on fire, one or the other. Let me find my heat gun. Okay, so I changed my plan. No heat gun. This little uh, soldering iron came with an infrared. Hopefully, you can see that orange in there infrared heating tip so we can control very precisely where the heat goes however will it get hot enough to uh, do anything what I really need is a mandrel something I can push this down onto oh it must be getting hot it's starting to blister something I can push this down onto and uh, heat it from the top side. Come here, inch and five sixteenths deep well socket. Like I said earlier, if this works, I'll be just as amazed as you guys are. Okay, so it looks terrible. We're going for function, not fashion. I'm going to get this lid to stay on. It's all jacked up. So... This, I'm not sure what this is. 
Huh, ABS plastic. PC ABS plastic. And what's this top part? Polycarbonate, probably. I don't know if the two play well together or not. We're fixing to find out. Okay, the old GoPro, GoPro battery is about 15%, so we're going to try to do this fairly quick. The thing with the key with plastic welding is heat and pressure. Like I said, this might look like crap. I don't care. I'm sure someone will chime in and be like, oh, polycarbonate and ABS can't be plastic welded. I don't care. We're going to try. I mean, what do we got to lose? Nothing. A little bit of time on a Friday night that I'd be doing nothing else anyway. That's got a pretty big gap in it. Kind of like welding steel. If you can walk across it, you can weld across it. The Sedano engineers and mechanics are probably rolling over right now. They're probably screaming at the computer. They're just telling me to stop. They're screaming at their phone. All right, we're supposed to get a little precipitation on Tuesday night, so fill in the cracks. Let's make this baby waterproof. See if it works. Like I said, we'll know on Monday. Okay, the old battery is at seven percent, but I just had a revelation. My DeWalt uh, drills and stuff are twenty volts, so that's pretty close to twenty-four. Let's see what happens. What you look, you there? We have. Uh, resurrected it from the dead so like I said earlier I could have bought a replacement but uh, there's something to be said for having a little pride in fixing something that was destroyed I also had to add another little jumper I missed one earlier that was broken a trace that was broke so I had to add a jumper right in there yeah, that's uh, it's pretty astounding to me. There it is. In all of its uh, busted glory. At least now we know it'll work.